everybody! Um, so this is a little bit different than my normal videos that I would do for classes. Um, obviously I'm in a different location. Um, we redid our basement so I lost my filming area, but um, yeah. My bedroom suffices, I think. And um, for anyone who wants to ask, that is the dome in uh, Cologne, Germany. And I bought it there when we went on vacation as a family. It's one of my favorite buildings in all of Europe. And it is made out of music notes about um, from the piece that was written about the dome itself. So, yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, anyway, so what I wanted to do today is a little introduction to my library. Now, this is nowhere near all of my books because I have 152 books in my bedroom alone and an entire box or two in storage and a couple more downstairs I think. Um, so I won't be showing you any of the recent acquisitions just because um, they are covered in mold and falling apart. The binding is not so great on them and uh, I'm allergic to mold. So yeah, can't show them to you because I don't really want to have a sneezing attack right before I go to work. So let's start off with, hmm, I got a bunch of stacks here, let's see. These are all recent acquisitions, so we'll start with older ones. Okay, Ooh. and have a book of avalanche over here. Alrighty, so this was one of my first buys ever. It does not look like much. The gold leafing on the side and on the front, which you cannot really see. It's got some water damage too. But the gold leafing on the front has come off, but it is a first edition Keats and Shelley. I don't know if anybody can see that. Who are some of my favorite poets? Um, yeah, this was... Printed in, I don't remember the date on this one, and I don't think it is anywhere in here, so that makes life fun. Anyway, um, it smells a little bit like smoke, so this is not one that I really keep out very much. kind of just stays on my bookshelf because I am also allergic to smoke. And there's a cat! <laughs> Sorry. Loki really likes it when I get books out and likes to be the center of attention, so he'll just be walking through. Give him a minute. Um, buddy, out of the books. This is my, actually, this was my second acquisition. This was my first acquisition. Could you not? You're not helping. So my first acquisition was actually this one. This is a first edition um, Yates. It's called Plays and Controversies by W.B. Yates, who is one of my favorite Irish writers. Um, afterwards coming Keats and Shelley. But I took an Irish literature class in college and fell in love with his writing. So I had to get one as soon as I saw it. And this one was printed in Toronto. And it was done in 1923. There is some gorgeous replications of charcoal drawings of the author. And it has this lovely protective sheet over the title page. And Loki, if you could not step on my books, that would be great. So there's the um, Plays and Controversies. It is gorgeous, and this one's in amazing condition. The binding is not broken at all, which is a miracle. And would you like me to move that so you can lay down? Um, so yeah, this one is in amazing condition. This one as well is also in condition, amazing condition, except for um, where the gold leafing came off the pages is very dark now. Um, not really worth it to try to repair because I have lots of other books that require a lot of repairs. So these are my first two. On to the rest of my stack. Okay, so this one um, I got uh, as a gift when I bought this one. Um, a lot of the times with rare book dealers um, you get really good deals. Uh, this one is a $150 book. I got it for 50 bucks because I was a student and I told him I was studying libraries and I was so excited and that I had found it and yeah he gave it to me for 50 bucks because he said you're passionate it looks like you'll use it so I do this one I think I got for around I want to say $15 and then because I was so excited about it and the lady saw I love books she gave me this one for free as a package deal um there's a little bit of cat hair on it I apologize 
Um, so this one is The History of the Novel in England by Lovett and Hughes. It has a little bit of gold leafing on the side, but not much. Um, and my favorite part about this book is the provenance because if you can see it's got little notes of who owned it and oh just kidding yeah this one was originally three dollars but I got it for free um, it has notes from someone who is very passionate about the history I have not gone through to read the whole thing as of yet um, because it is in very teeny tiny itty bitty cursive and I just haven't had the moment um, this one was published in 1932 and is in a state of um, great condition but it's in a little bit of um, decay so it smells like amazing old book it smells like exactly what you think an old bookstore would smell like so this is one of my favorites and it makes my bedroom smell like books so not really all that mad about it Loki honey you're in the way <laughs> okay so this was one of my um, other acquisitions, and it came from a little bookstore that's um, about four or five miles down the street from my house. I stop there all the time because my therapist is right across the street, so every time after therapy, I go do some book therapy. And they have a really amazing collection of old books that people from the area have donated, and I got this one as a buy one, get one free when I bought a book for a friend. Um, so this one the guy gave me because it is on the Spanish Princess Catherine. And he knows it's my name because I'm there way too often. So I have not read this one yet. Um, it's in great condition. The binding is a little tiny bit flimsy, but not too bad. And I like this one because it has one of my favorite maps of the royalty um, royal line that I've ever seen in my life. So that was pretty cool. Um, uh, the date, this one is, oh, and it has a great book plate in it, too. So that's really exciting. Um, has a few of them in it, actually. Uh, this one was 1954. So not as old as the rest of them, but for a freebie, I'm not going to pass it up. Okay, so my second round of ac acquisitions. Excuse me. Alrighty, so this one is a very controversial piece that I have in my collection. Um, I don't share that I have this a lot because um, I'm not entirely sure of the political consequences of it, which makes this book sound like a really big deal. It's not that big of a deal, but it kind of is. got this for $15 at the Detroit Book Festival at Eastern Market. It happens every summer. This is where I got most of these books. Um... Actually, I'd say about 80-90% of my books. Um, but this is a... I don't know if anybody can read that at all because it is in horrible condition. It's missing the front portion of um, its binding. And actually, this is a really neat way to see binding on a book. But you can see the sewing of the binding on this book, which is amazing. So I have a lot of repairs to do on this one. But there's a reason that it's like this. This is a first edition, well, first English edition um, version of Mein Kampf printed in the United States. Um, so that's a pretty big deal. Um, it even has a publisher's note about how he does not um, agree, or the publisher's note about how the company does not agree with what is in this book, but it was necessary to print. And it is an amazing copy of it. It is only missing the title page because it starts off with the publisher's note. It's only missing the title page and the um, front um, board. So not in too bad condition. I could probably fix it. But um, not really something I like to advertise owning for obvious reasons. Pretty cool though. And uh, for $15, why not? So that was the only acquisition I made two summers ago because had a lot of stuff to do. And then my next acquisition after that was actually a gift from a friend. This is my favorite aesthetically pleasing book. It's The Daughter of Napoleon. It's about um, her life um, and the memoirs of Emily de Pe Pelleprois, Princess de Chambry. So um, it's a very interesting um, topic. I've not had a chance to read it yet and I cannot wait. And there is a gorgeous little recreation of one of her portraits. And it was printed 
1922. I don't know if anybody can see that right there. But it is a great copy, and I mean, it is absolutely aesthetically pleasing. It's my favorite color. So it's one of my favorite books. I leave it on the top of my shelf all the time because I just like to look at it. Have not read it yet. It's on the list. And then I went a little book crazy at, oh, I got this one too. I forgot about this. Oh, that's bad. Um, so this one I also bought at the little BYOB, which is Bring Your Own Books. That's the store name. It's great. Go in there. They have comics. They have everything you could ever want in there. And it's a secondhand bookshop. Um, they also take books. So if you're looking to sell, they got some good ones. And they have a couple recommendations for binders as well. So this one I bought um, because it is really cool. It's um, actually I think I got this for three dollars or something like that but it's a first um it's a story about someone learning how to play the violin and it's about the first violin it's got some gorgeous cover and the marbling on the paper oh goodness gracious is absolutely amazing apparently part of my mind comp fell out so we're just gonna slide that guy right back in there I understand I'm also not wearing gloves, but these are my personal books, so I'm not too worried about the condition of them as long as I don't wreck the binding. Um, marbled paper on the inside, which is gorgeous, and some amazing little pictures in there. This one was printed in Chicago, and it doesn't have a year for it. I've been looking and trying to figure this out. Um, I know it was a gift from someone named Olga in 2007, but that is <clears throat> all I know. And I apologize if I sneeze or anything like that, but I am very allergic to old books. And I love the fact that it has one of the old advertisements in the back for selling books. So that's really neat. It might help me figure out when it was uh, printed around when anyway. So I'll have to do a little digging on that one. Um, and then I went, I went book crazy last summer and bought all of these. And you know what? I don't regret it because some of these are really cool. Anyone that knows me and knows my history knows I'm obsessed with Pompeii. And I've wanted to go there since I was a kid. Um, I read, I had one of those little like first reader books. I don't know if anybody else remembers those. You got them at the Scholastic Fair. But um, it had, yeah, I don't remember how long it was. It was like, it was, I think it was level four or something like that. But I read that thing until the pages fell out of the binding. And I continued to read it afterwards. I knew that by, by heart and love Pompeii. So this is the last day, uh, the last day of Pompeii. And it has absolutely amazing cover. I loved it. The minute I saw it, I didn't even know what it was about. And then I picked it up and figured out it was by Pomp or about Pompeii and had to have it. It's got gorgeous writing by somebody from Sterling Heights. So, never looked into the background of him, but this one was printed in New York. It's got some amazing covers. It's about theories of why Vesuvius erupted. And not scientific ones, all mystical Roman type stories. Um, and yeah, this is the, the original version of this book was printed in 1834. And I do not know the date on the printing of this one, which makes life fun. So I have a lot of digging to do on a couple of these books. Um, it's in great condition. And uh, yeah, uh, I love that one. So for the sake of time, we'll move on. Um, I then picked up these two, which these are first editions um, for this specific um, publisher, not first edition, first editions, because if I own these as first editions, I would not be living with my parents, um, <laughs> or I'd be broke on the street. Um, these are first editions from this publisher of Shakespeare's King Lear and Richard III. So they came originally as a very large set. There were only two left that were in decent condition. The guy didn't have any of the other ones, so he sold them to me for like $5. There is damage on the cover of that one. It just looks like some sticky stuff. It could probably come off. This one has a little bit of discoloration on it, which honestly looks like pencil. But um, other than that, they have some great writing. They used to be in a library. I think it was Ohio State University. But um, yeah, this is what happens to old library books that nobody wants anymore. They end up at book fairs and then they end up in my library. 
So I wanted to see what year these were printed in because I don't actually know. Um, they have all of the wood engravings from the original first edition, which is pretty cool. Um, it was printed in 1908, I think. The paper feels a little bit more modern than that, so it might be... I'm honestly thinking 50s, just judging by the binding and the paper. So, yeah, that's those two. Then I got, along with that one, I got a... I believe it's a first edition. Let me double check. 1913. So it is not a first edition. But um, the first edition was only in 1906. So it's a Dickens Tale of Two Cities. Um, great condition. Amazing. Um, Macmillan Company yet again. Um, it's the Pocket Classics Edition, which is kind of rare to find, actually. The binding on this one is broken, as one can see. Um, not horribly so. Um, you can see, if anybody can see this, the stitching on that one is different, and it was bound in a more modern way, and wow, look at that dust. So, um, there's also a note that says page 138, and I don't entirely know what that means, but this is interesting. I opened it up. And there's a note in here. I actually had no idea that that was there, um, which shows how much I actually look at my own books. But someday I'll have to read that note. Maybe it's a love letter. Who knows? And then I got, um, anyone who also knows me knows that I want to open a bookstore eventually, a French bookstore with a cafe in it. And the name of my bookstore will be La Tulipe Noire, which is the black tulip, and Dumas wrote a book called La Tulipe Noire, and I got a first edition of it, um, printed in 19... Actually, doesn't say. All right, cool. But, um, yeah, it's gorgeous. I love it. And um, it has some amazing fleur-de-lis on it. And, yeah, I saw this, and I knew I had to have it because it will be front and center in my bookstore when it's open someday. And then my last but not least acquisition that I got was a collector's edition of Goethe. Um, it is Faust, so um, which I have never read before, and I'm so excited to read it because I've heard it's really creepy. Um, this one, I don't know, it just doesn't show up on video, does it? There's gold leafing all over this white part. Maybe if I tilt it. Yeah, there you go. You can see it. It's Faust, and the whole side of the book is gold leafing with this coloration, but it's got the author, it's got the title, same on the back, and the gold leafing is in great condition, and we've got these lovely little lilies here, and it is a gorgeous copy. It's the first edition by this printer, but it's a collector's edition for most people who know the book. Um, it is copyright 1890, and it's got some writing in it, that looks like um, the binding is broken, so, you know. Here's the index, not in the book, but it's okay. So, yeah, it's got some gorgeous, gorgeous colors. And where are the photos? There we go. Ooh, my books are sliding. I just love the inside cover. It is absolutely gorgeous. And, yeah, these are some of my old books. If any of you read my blog post, um, you'll know that I do have some really, really cool, very expensive acquisitions that I just made from a family member. Um, some of those I'd like to keep private because they disclose some personal information about family members that previously we did not know. So, not a great thing to find out through the acquisition of a book. <laughs> but um, one of them is the Atlas of Skin and Venereal Diseases, which has some amazing prints and photographs in it. Well, not photographs. Uh, prints and pictures in it. Um, disgustingly amazing, but I love it. And another one that I got was what I believe is a second edition or a first edition. I'm not sure. Um, of a very famous story. And um, 
yeah, so I will be showing those soon, hopefully. And then the rest of the stuff that I have currently is all modern day stuff like my Jane Austen that I always have next to me. So, um, yeah, I can show you guys the modern stuff if you'd like to see it. Just let me know. Um, these are just currently all of my old books except for the ones that are in a little bit of disrepair. Um, and I do have a whole French book collection that I can show as well. It's just a little hard to explain in English. Um, so, yeah, this is just, let's see, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. These are just 13 of my 150 books in my bedroom. The others are all over there. So, well, except for Jane Austen. But, yeah, let me know if you guys would like to see anything and what other content you'd like to see in the videos.